Today's project will be the start of a table frame for a granite countertop, rather, not a granite countertop, just a, a table. As you can see from the dimensions, it's going to be 44 and 3 quarter by 25 and a quarter. The material is 1 by 2 by 097 wall rectangle, rectangle tube, mitered corners, and I will grind the outside welds so they look nice and smooth. Inside weld will be fine. Um, I'm actually going to have some square tube for the legs. It's going to come in here at these places and get a weld here and here on each corner. Now the feet, rather, here's a leg. Bottom of the leg is going to get some flat bar welded on and it's going to be drilled and tapped for 5 16 18 elevator bolts so he's going to be able to get this thing nice and level to basically wherever he puts the thing. So next up I'm going to do a layout for a 45 degree cut for these miter joints and I'm going to get this uh, top of the table cut down in the bandsaw. Just doing my layout here for a 45 degree cut. The bandsaw has a rule on the side of it but you can't go off of that if you want to get uh, some precision stuff so I do a layout here, this little Swanson square is accurate. And I only need to do a layout on one. I'll set it on the machine and uh, put another piece of 2 by or one by 2 material next to this. One cut, it's two parts, and then I'll do the other end so I can have four parts with mitered corners. As you can see, the saw got a bath since the last time you've seen it. To change the angle on these guys, I just keep these two wrenches right here for easy access. We all like easy access, right? material and put it in there. I'm going to show you a little tool I made to help with my bandsaw cutting. As you saw from a previous video, to support long work I use jack stands. And if the jack stand doesn't line up just perfectly with the bottom of the material, to give a nice cut or give a, a flat cut, you know, have my work supported uh, on the top of the bandsaw nice. Oh, I'll use this guy. This part here just sits on top of the jack stand like this. And what I've got is just a piece of flat bar here, take welded here and here. And this is for the uh, differential of a 1985 Toyota Supra, it's one of the nuts that uh, holds the differential in place. You have the bolts that come through the, the chassis, and then this is on the back side. And I just TIG welded that guy to the top of this plate, and while it was hot, I hit it with some oil, uh, really by accident, but it gave it a nice color and it, it doesn't rust. And this is a, a head bolt from a 7M GTE. It's a 3 liter single turbo motor from a Toyota Supra. And another piece of flat bar in the work just sits on top here. And uh, it comes in handy. It can hold a little bit of weight on it. And um, it's it's what I use for now. Eventually I'll make some rollers for the, for the work. But uh, right now this is what I'm doing. So I'll get back over there and set up another cut. Here's a for doing multiple parts if you don't want to measure each one and you only have a few of these to cut, especially on a miter joint, which takes more time to do the layout, get everything lined up nice. Just line up the ends of the part and then you go down to your opposite end and just do a scribe line. 
And of course, you only want to do your scribe line after you measure your first part, verify that it is at the dimension you're after. Here's another option for doing multiple cuts for the same size part. Line up your ends like you saw in the previous clip. You set your previously cut part on top of the stock that needs to get cut down. Bring your saw blade down and just run your material just to where it starts, just touches that blade. And that's going to get you lined up for your next uh, next cut. Tighten the jaws down. See, they moved a little bit. So you want to make sure that you fix that. And we're lined up nice for the next cut. And we'll go ahead and just start the saw and let the thing do its work. The beauty about a bandsaw is you can have it do stuff while you move on to other work. It's a, it's a low buck CNC, right? Just kidding. Next up, working on the parts that will get the hole and threaded for the 516 18. And just a little tip for deburring these. Since this is all drop material, I'm not concerned with preserving the lengths of these. I'm going to put them in the drill press and just one hole for four parts. Um, so right now I'm going to win. I'm not going to remove any material other than the mill scale. And rather than hold uh, inch and a half square parts in here on this flat disc. I can go about it in a safer fashion and just do the ends on the built-in handle here. Next step is putting them in the drill press and lining them up, knocking the hole through them, getting ready for threading. I don't like using cutting fluid most of the time when I'm drilling holes. I can get plenty of life out of bits without the Now I'll come in here on each one of these parts and get a little countersink. Anybody want to donate a mill to me? Now let's put some threads in here. I don't have a spring center yet. Um, actually, I'm quite efficient on uh, tapping implements. I just have purchased things as I need them and never bought kits and whatnot. So what I do is take a nut and go to the top of the spindle and bring the quill down by hand and just take a half inch ratchet and go for it. 
Once I get started, I might power it up, but maybe not this time because my speed set kind of high. And I'll do the other three off camera. Got done putting the saw back on 90. Now I'll do a gang cut of this flat wire. Just set it in there like yo. And I square again to get them all nice. And I have my square set to inch and a half, so these can be inch and a half square. And I'll just run these in until the end of the blade touches the saw. And then we can go ahead and do our cut. And we will get inch and a half wide parts. Got my parts laid out of the table. I find uh, laying them out like this, if you've got a good bit of deburring or well prepped to do, it uh, helps a lot of the time. A little bit of a production tip there for my massive quantity of four parts. There we go. After I put power to my tool. Gonna grab some lunch, then I'll come out and I'll get this set up, pack welded. Right now I'm set up to weld these feet, the threaded feet, 516s, 18. These saw me struggle through on the drill press for at least one of them. And they're gonna go right on to the end of these. I've got everything well prepped and wiped down, deburred, etc., etc. There we go. Got the machine set on 125 amps. I'm not going to need all that, but that's what it's on right now. And again, the material is 097 on the tube and quarter inch thick plates. If I was willing to order quarter inch, quarter inch, I might. Uh, crank up the machine all the way to 175 amps. When I'm fitting things together, sometimes, rather most of the times, I'll take the weld seam, the tube weld seam on the inside of these guys, and I'll face them in the same direction when I do the fit up. So I'll set this up on the table all the same way, and I'll take the factory edge on this uh, flat bar, and face them all in the same direction. So when I put the thing together, these two will be facing in the same direction. It's a little anal, but uh, why not, right? So I'm going to hold these on by hand. I've made sure that all the parts are square. Now just come in here and put a little tack right here. And then flip it over, do another tack and go down the line. That way I can do all my welding without anything uh, causing any issues. So 
but once I get that tack on there, I hold the bottom into the tube so it doesn't spring back out. Flip it over. And do it again. When I'm doing these autogenous tacks, meaning no filler, since I'm working with two different thicknesses of material, I'll take the torch and focus the heat on the thick part, get the puddle going, and then I'll wash it over to the thinner part. I do have a small bevel on the end of these pipes, but no bevels on the flat bar. Again, until that little puddle pulls, I'll put pressure on the bottom of the flat bar here for the tube so it doesn't pull in the open position.